act as it was necessary for me for my freedom. I literally had to do this in order to be a free man. You don't know what it's like to be enslaved in a business deal against your will when your contract permits you to move on and you have someone who wants to treat you like they own you on a plantation. You don't know what that's like to live in America and be a slave. That's why I fought with everything I had in me, and thank God I won. And so whether you like me or not, I just won a victory for everyone in the media. Everyone in the media was just given a victory yesterday by Michael Savage. And strangely enough, a uh, a guest on the O'Reilly Show mentioned something about me in a weird way. You don't know whether it was... Listen to the clip right now in clip one for a minute. It's It's a good distraction. Speaking to my political contacts uh, throughout uh, throughout London tonight, and uh, they say that uh, even though people are upset here about what Donald Trump has uh, had to say, that he will not get banned by this uh, committee of parliament that will be meeting. Uh, now, there is a precedent for this happening, however, and it's what, what probably, probably has Donald Trump's office a little bit concerned. If Americans are found violating uh, hate speech or provocative speech, whatever, they have been blocked in the past. Uh, the fighter, um, uh, Mike Tyson, was blocked. The the uh, radio di radio host, uh, Mike Savage, as well as uh, Terry Jones, the, the preacher. The question is, is what he has been saying classified as hate speech? And again, my contacts say it won't be classified as hate well, speech. I hope not. Yeah. Well, Bill, I'm glad you hope not. Maybe you can really become a big man. I mean, I know you're six foot six, Bill. Maybe you can suddenly become five foot six in your actual stature, your spiritual stature, and recognize uh, the mistakes you made in the past with regard to Michael Savage. But I'm glad to be lumped in with Mike Tyson. He's always been one of my heroes. I had no idea he was banned from Britain. In fact, I know somebody who's a good friend of his. I'm going to go out of my way to meet him. I didn't know we have that in common. Maybe we'll go to Ireland together. I'll be right back. Listen, many of you are uh, Facebooking me of where can you read more about my Supreme Court case. It's on the Drudge Report right now, seven down. Michael Savage prevails at Supreme Court. It's right above the vampire girl who drinks blood. <laughs> Joe on WABC, go ahead, please. Hey, Mike, how you doing? I just wanted to comment. I heard the last part of when your caller, Anna, was on. I believe that was her name. Uh, about the sailors. The yeah, I understand. Sailors. So what's your point? You don't agree with Anna. You know more than her. And, and what's your opinion on the naval uh, riverboats going aground? Well, no, I want to ask you, why do you think that it was a government, or why does she think it was a government conspiracy? Why do you not think it was? Well, like, first of all, why would that benefit the president at all? Or it to be because a I'll, you want an answer? I'll give you one. Because they're returning $56 billion of seized assets to Iran, the terror nation, as part of John Kerry's great diplomacy. And in order to make Iran look less terroristic, even though they just terrorized us and threatened us before this, they want us now to, to embrace the Iranian government. Do you understand that? Yeah, well, okay. They, they wouldn't. Why would they do it? That, that's totally. That, that doesn't even make sense. So. If, if well, you're not fought. You ask me why this twisted, subversive administration would want us to view Iran in a positive manner. I gave you the answer. Have our boats conk out, go aground, be rescued by the great Iranians, uh, and then suddenly, oh, what wonderful people the Iranians are. They're really not as bad as those mean Republicans say. That's the scenario I see. Their speech. Thank you for the call. That's the reason that you call, is I try to give you my opinion. I don't think I've changed your mind. This is the biggest subject of the day. The alternate universe of the cafe singer in the White House. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It was a mistake. That was our fault. And we apologize for our mistake. Um, in your GPS, right, in GPS track, it is completely that you have penetrated to Iran to water? I believe so. How was the Iranian behavior with you? The Iranian behavior was fantastic while we were here. We thank you very much for your hospitality. You like that tabouleh? Uh, didn't you have a special problem? We had no problem, sir. I also you like want to the thank special the Iranian... Thing? So we're talking about the setup, stage play, the kabuki play of two naval um, river boats mysteriously conking out or going aground, rather, on a very well-mapped island in the Gulf. Unbelievable. It's not capable. It couldn't happen by accident. That's my allegation. I'm a boater. And you had a woman call earlier whose husband is on this type of boat. She said everyone knows the uh, far that Farsi Island is the only object in the entire area. How could they go aground? Their GPS went out? Would they have a GPS on their cell phones? Secondly, it's well marked. So something was wrong here. And my allegation is that there's a double agent inside the administration, somewhere deep in this administration, who sabotaged these boats to humiliate the United States military and moreover to transfer top secret technology. And I brought up a previous situation three or four years ago under your president, the subversive president of the United States of America, when he accidentally sent the U.S. drone, the most advanced drone in our military's arsenal, into Iranian hands without a scratch on it. It mysteriously landed in their hands. Now this? Now U.S. sailors apologizing? This is right out of a propaganda movie. And I'm asking for your commentary on this. It's astounding to watch this. It's sickening in light of the fact that the man living in an alternative universe, your president, gave a speech last night that was right out of Stalin's uh, era in Russia, where he said that in paradise there could be no homicides. And if a cop wanted to report or you know, follow up on a homicide in Russia at that time, he was told not to, because Stalin the madman, the, the crazy madman who killed 30 million Russians, the madman in Russia, Stalin, said there can be no homicide in paradise, and socialism is paradise. It can only occur in a capitalist nation. Here is Obama virtually mimicking the same kind of madness. Listen to clip number seven. Listen to the madness of this man. Sixty years ago, when the Russians beat us into space, we didn't us. deny Sputnik was up there. <laughs> we didn't argue about the science or shrink our research and development budget. We built a space program almost overnight, and 12 years later, we were walking on the moon. And this subversive just killed that space program. That By the way, of discovery is in our DNA. America is Thomas Edison and the Wright brothers and George Washington Carver. America is in the same breath. Grace Hopper and Catherine Who are Johnson they? and Sally Ride. Wait, listen to me. The man is putting Thomas Edison and the Wright brothers in the same category as George Washington Carver and Katherine Johnson, who no one ever heard of. It's shocking. But it's not shocking when you consider that this is an academic, progressive liar from the top to the bottom. Now let's get down to brass tacks. The issue in Iran. The apology. My allegation that there is some kind of double agent going on, double agent operating in this government, and has been, from the drone to SEAL Team 6, being killed in a helicopter over the uh, valley in Afghanistan. The helicopter suddenly going down in the middle of the uh, battle. Sent into the same exact, on the same exact flight path over and over again with no, uh, no support helicopters. Do you remember when all those SEALs died? You know, their names will not be uh, forgotten in vain. They're not going to be forgotten by me. I wrote a whole book about them. They have parents left behind whose hearts were broken by this subversive administration. And nobody's ever paid the penalty for having sent them to their deaths in that flaming helicopter, ever. A lot has happened. And so I want to talk about it. I want to ask what you think about this. Something is very, very wrong with this picture. Let's go to the gentleman who says he's a uh, retired 
officer on one of these boats. Mark on KSFO in San Francisco. Go ahead, please. Came out. We just had a flame out. We'll go to the next one. Bruce on WMAL. Go ahead, please. Hello, Mike. Uh, yeah, we've already seen where Iran has brought down our classified intelligence gathering drones. They have spoofed the GPS signals. And it would take nothing to spoof the GPS units on these boats to lead them into a, a, a bad navigational error where they could be grounded or brought into their uh, territorial waters. So, so you're, you're saying that it's feasible, at least, that Iran disabled the GPS, and you're probably also saying it doesn't take a, a double agent in the White House to, to help that. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying that Japan spoofed the GPS with stronger signals and misled the GPS units. It's like they brought our intelligence gathering drones down. You mean Iran, not Japan, right? Yeah, Iran. The signals from the satellites are so faint electrically that it doesn't take much to overpower those signals with false signals. Are you telling me the U.S. Navy doesn't have counter systems to this, knowing what you know? No. And obviously the Air Force didn't have it either when they brought down you know, one of our classified intelligence drones. Okay, so the next step. Did you serve in the Navy? No, I was a former Air Force officer, computer engineer. Okay, were you told what to do if captured by an enemy? Are you told to apologize or not? I mean, is that protocol? The only time you would ever do anything like that was if your life was basically in danger of you were essentially being in danger of being executed or one of your teammates. But Iran uh, tells us they were not mistreated, and the sailors said they were not mistreated. So why would they suddenly say Iran is so great and they were treated so well? For the same reason the North Vietnamese and the North Koreans got our people to say things on video by threatening, you know, threatening them before they were uh, videoed. Yeah, I wonder where John McCain is now that we need him. How come he's not saying anything, the war, the war horse? Thanks, Bruce. I appreciate that. Next caller, your opinion counts on the Savage Nation. WFJX Radio. Jim, go ahead, please. Your opinion counts. Yes, sir. Um, I'm a Sears School graduate. You would never, ever apologize. And your former caller got it right, unless it was, you know, to protect the life of yourself or one of your other guys. And, and they'll actually try to trick you that they're going to execute you to get you to be videotaped. Uh, no, I understand. Listen, I as a civilian understand that, but I didn't see that happen. They seem to have apologized without being threatened, or do you think they were threatened and they didn't tell us, obviously, to get out of there? I think he had the opportunity to talk to a State Department rep to verify his identity or something, and the State Department rep from the uh, uh, you know, head Muslim in charge told him, to, uh, told him to apologize. Did you hear how John Kerry went on immediately after this and congratulated himself for his wonderful diplomacy with Iran? Don't you think it's a little too convenient? Doesn't it look like a kabuki play to you? Crazy. I, I think uh, when I was at the Citadel, Admiral Stockdale was the president, and uh, he was going to be interviewed by the press in North Vietnam, and he broke a slat out of the bottom of the chair in the interview room before they got in the room and beat himself senseless. And he was bleeding from the face and the head and all that when the press came in because he didn't want to be interviewed and, and he wanted them to know. He wanted the international press to know that they were being beaten. And he, he believed that nobody would believe that he did that to himself. And after Well, that's, war, before, that's before Jane Fonda took over America. Right now we have a country being run by a man who is acting like Jane Fonda during the Vietnam War. That's what it looks like to me. If Jane Fonda and her academic cohorts had become, let's say, the leaders of this country, this is the kind of situation we'd be in. It's treasonous. They, they need to be, uh, you know... Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh we don't go there. We don't go there. We're peace-loving people. We believe in the electoral process because it's so honest. And look at those wonderful people during the speech last night on both sides of the aisle congratulating the man with the big smile. Why, he could do no wrong to on both sides of the aisle. There was hardly a frown, let alone anyone turning their back on him. How, how did that happen? That not one Republican turned their back on this liar last night. If I were in Congress, I would have turned my back on him. I would have booed. I would have asked the sergeant of arms to throw me out. I would have made the whole world listen to one voice of protest to the liar. I didn't hear one. Hey, Mike. In well, okay, let's, let's say I'm not in Congress. Thank God. Now you know why I'm not in Congress. 
I'm uh, what's uh, known as a member of the fourth estate. And our job is very simple. If we're good at it, what we do is we act as a, a nudge in the side of the established order. 